Hi, this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection, and I'm Bill Sanders. What I want to do today is that I want to go through the process of buying your first high horology watch. And the by high horology, uh, we might as well start at the top. In a previous discussion, we talked about the holy trinity of watches, the Patek Philippe, Vesperon Constantine, and Audemars Piguet. So the first thing that we want to do is to put together a checklist. And on the checklist, we want to have the things that we're going to look for when we look at a watch. Uh, first of all, we want to look at the face. This can be a deal breaker as, as far as I'm concerned. I, I also know that the auction houses uh, have, will talk about this being a deal breaker. If something's wrong with the face, that's it. So we'll look at the face first and then we can save ourselves a lot of time <laughs> looking at everything else. Second, we'll look at the movement. Uh, what kind of movement does it have? Now, we're just going to be looking either for a wind-up or an automatic. We're not going to be looking at quartz or anything like that. So if we find it's an automatic, that's, that's another... I mean, if we find out that it's a quartz, that's, that's a deal-breaker, too. Okay, then we want to look at the, the back and the inside back of the watch. This is where the case number is. And this also has the reference number of the watch. So that's something else we want to look at. We want to look at the crown, make sure the crown is part of the mark. Uh, for example, we're going to be looking at a Vacheron Constantine and we're going to be looking for the Maltese cross. We want to look at the buckle. Uh, buckles are very expensive. I bought a Patek Philippe and uh, needed a, a, a buckle, uh, needed a Patek buckle and that was very expensive. Uh, and finally, we're going to look at the band and for gold watches, we're going to be looking at the spring rods. Uh, this is uh, something that that is an important thing that goes on. The, the little spring bar goes on the, the spring that holds the band onto the lugs. Okay, so off we go. We're going out on the internet and we're going to look up Vacheron Constantine. Okay, well here's one for, they want $24.95 for it. Let's take a look at it. Uh, right away the face of that thing is it's it, it may have a great inside but that face is not something that I'd want to wear it's just too yucky it's it was probably nice originally but it just is uh, banged up pretty much so let's let's keep on looking okay well here's another one now this one is for twenty seven hundred dollars hey by the way too notice both of these are under uh, to, uh, under three thousand dollars, which for a watch of this, for a Holy Trinity watch, is pretty good. You can buy, I think, the least expensive Holy Trinity watch, brand new, is about ten thousand. You can buy in the Automar PGA for that, a small one. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's uh, take a look now. We have uh, we'll take a little closer look at the face. The face looks pretty good. It's a uh, eighteen karat gold uh, case to it. Okay, now let's look at the movement. Oh boy, uh, it's a caliber 1003 slash 1. That slash 1 is pretty important. This is a classic Vesteron Constantine Ebosh. Uh, it's, a, it's a great movement, a uh, great caliber. So that's a good thing uh, for us. And we'll look around and uh, there is the uh, Pollen Son du Geneve, the Geneva seal, which is another great thing to have, especially on a watch this, uh, at this price. This is looking pretty good. Now, one thing on here that you may not have noticed, and you probably wouldn't unless you know what to look for. In 1970, Vesteron Constantine switched from Vesteron and Constantine to Vesteron Constantine. On the face, it said Vacheron Constantine, but look at here, look at the, uh, on the movement, it says Vacheron and Constantine. Could possibly something be wrong. In this case, probably not, because we know that the movement was originally designed back in the 1950s. And we also know that they use that uh, one of 003 
uh, version one up until the 1990s. Now, the difference between the one and the uh, the two of the 1003 is that in the 50s they didn't have the technology to put any kind of shock protection in, like a little shock absorber. But by 1990 they did. So the the uh, one version doesn't have shock absorbers and the newer ones do. Okay, so the, the, the fact that the watch is probably between 19, well, we know it's after 1970 because of the name on the face, but it's before 1990. That's not uh, that unusual of a, of a stretch. So you, you can have a little contradiction in there, but on your newer ones, uh, you better not find uh, uh, the ampersand in between the, um, the, the names of the watch. Okay, um, the back and end side back, uh, important here. The case numbers match, that's important. So we're not dealing with anything funny. And you can see the reference number. So uh, then you'll know how to use that number. If you, use, if you put in that reference number and you search the web, you can find out uh, about some other ones of that same reference number, what they have sold for. Okay, now we take a look at the crown. Uh-oh, uh, here is our is a big alert. The crown should have a Maltese cross on it, and it doesn't. So it's probably something may have happened, and the crown got knocked off and lost, and so they put a replacement on. Uh, this is something that at least I would do. If, if I'm going to have a Vacheron Constantine, I want to make sure it's a Vacheron Constantine all the way through. I don't want to have some part from who knows where. Okay, so that's one thing I'm going to have to replace. The buckle. Looking at the buckle, now the buckle is a Vacheron Constantine buckle. That's good. I'm not going to have to go out and buy one of those. The band is not. Uh, I'm going to have to replace a, the band on here. A band about between four and five hundred dollars, a, a genuine Vacheron Constantine. Okay, uh, so th what I'm thinking of is that you know, looking at the uh, asking price and what I would end up wanting to negotiate for this, these are things you have to look for. So I got the crown, the buckle's good, but I am going to have to replace the band. Now I, I inquired, and this this is actually a search <laughs> I'm doing uh, right now. I ask about the uh, spring bars. And the spring bars need to be made of gold if you have a gold case. And the reason for that is, is that the steel is harder, the uh, uh, stainless steel in the spring bars is harder than gold. And it will eventually contort, it'll punch a little sort of a, a, a hole into it, into the gold and the lugs, um, will no longer hold that spring bar. So that's another expense. I, uh, one store wanted $250 for Patet uh, ones, and I finally got it for $165. That's another expense that I take off. So I'm looking at this overall and making my decision about, I gotta decide, okay, how much am I willing to spend on this? And I would then contact the seller and say, hey, um, Here's what I like about the watch. Here's what I don't like about the watch. And this is what it's, it's going to cost me. And I think that the original price was um, very optimistic. <laughs> and so I would offer something else, something that would be reasonable uh, to both the seller and the buyer. I mean, the, the seller is not in, in business to not make money. So, I mean, it, that's you have to expect that. But on the other hand, you want to get the best price that you can, and you want to look at these details, because if you don't, you're going to miss something and end up paying for it later. Okay, so uh, in in buying your first uh, high horology watch, use a checklist. This is very important because these details. And and by the way, too, you may have some other things. Say, hey, you ought to look for this and this. Shoot me. Uh, a, a, a comment, put a comment in saying, hey, uh, this is something you ought to look for too. Add this to your checklist. Okay, until next time, this is Bill Sanders. Uh, this is Watch Art Sci. Click the subscribe button. See you around. Bye-bye.